Hello, this is Bill Webb, a.k.a. Billy Indiana. Today is January 1st, 2021, and I'm going to recount for you my favorite games of 2020. But first, let me preface by saying there were a lot of games that came out in 2020 that I didn't get a chance to play. So I'd love to play, but haven't had a chance to play games like Dune Imperium, The Lost Ruins of, Ruins of Arnak, Bonfire, Dwellings of Eldervale, Calico, Pandemic Season Zero, on and on. So there's a lot of games. I'll list some of them down in the description below that are on my wish list, but that I don't have yet and haven't had a chance to play. Uh, there's also two games in my collection that I got from 2020 but haven't had a chance to play yet. One is Britannia Classic and Dual Edition. It was a Kickstarter that I picked up, and I'm excited to play it, but still just haven't had a chance to get it to the table. And then another one is Pendulum by Stonemeyer Games, and uh, hoping to get this one to the table soon as well, but just haven't had a chance to play it yet. So those are two that are in my collection from 2020 that I haven't had a chance to get uh, a chance to get to the table. There are two other games that I did really enjoy that would be competitive for my top 10 except for a lot of a lot of people would argue that they're not technically 2020 games. One is The Crew, Quest for Planet 9, and this one technically came out in 2019. It was really only available in English in 2020, but for that reason I'll go ahead and eliminate it from this list. I played it in 2020 as I was able to get the English version then. Another one that's in the same kind of situation, The Liberation of Reitberg. Uh, Legends of Andor is one of my favorite games, and so this little sort of uh, spin-off game from that world by Michael Menzel and published by Cosmos, uh, a really fun game. Also would definitely be competing for one of those top 10 spots, but again, technically in Europe came out in 2019. All right. So a couple other comments uh, about some honorable mention games that I'll, that I'll bring up, and then some special case games, and then we'll get into the top 10. But first, some special cases. The first special case is a game that I didn't necessarily expect to love as much as I did. I don't think it would still make my top 10 of the year, but it was one that I didn't really think would be that enjoyable. I'm not really into word games, and actually Crosswords was really a lot of fun. I can see it being a great party game, um, it's right up there for me with just one and and uh, code names. I think it's just as fun, has a little bit of a twist to it compared to those games. And this was a 2020 game that really surprised me as one that I'll definitely keep in my collection and bring out for those times when we can have groups of people together. The second special case is Dale of Merchants. Now, Dale of Merchants has been around for quite a while, but Dale of Merchants 3 came out this year, and I picked it up as part of a Kickstarter along with this Dale of Merchants collection. And so I had not played any of the Dale of Merchants games until this year, and this Dale of Merchants 3 is one that I guess you could consider it kind of an expansion, um, and so I didn't count that one either, but it is a really great game. And the last special case, similar scenario as Dale of Merchants Dominion Menagerie. Uh, technically, if you have the base cards, you can play this as sort of a standalone, but you do need the base cards. And we that's the way we played it. We just took the base cards out and then used only... Uh, the 10 kingdom cards from Menagerie and played it quite a bit and really did enjoy it. But because you should really probably consider it an expansion, I mean, that's how it's titled. Um, we didn't, I didn't really consider that for my top 10 either, but great game. And now as any good top 10 list, we'll have honorable mentions. So some honorable mentions. We really got into escape room games recently, and we really enjoyed these two that came out in 2020, Deckscape, Escape from Alcatraz, and the Exit game. Uh, the Abandoned Cabin. Both of these were a lot of fun, and we've played a lot of escape room games uh, in these last couple months of 2020. These are two from 2020 that we really enjoyed. Another one, I think I'm going to probably really enjoy it uh, as I get a chance to play it more, but I've only played it once so far, so I didn't really feel like I could give it a fair shake in terms of rating it, but Viscounts of the West Kingdom, only played once, only played solo, really enjoyed it. So this one might creep into that top 10 eventually, but for now, it's just an honorable mention. Two other honorable mentions, Ticket to Ride Amsterdam. Uh, we love Ticket to Ride, and I've done a video on this version, this small box version. It was a lot of fun. Didn't quite crack the top 10, but really a nice game, little uh, small box twist on the Ticket to Ride franchise. 
and then Back to the Future, Dice Through Time. Uh, we had a good time with this. We like the Back to the Future movies. I like the fact that this integrated all three movies. Um, it's a dice game, which I tend to enjoy. So this one is a good one, but didn't quite crack the top 10, but definitely an honorable mention for us. And finally, now let's do get into the top 10 games of 2020, in my opinion. Number 10 is a small box game, Open Ocean by Joel Bodkin and Featherstone Games. I made a solo playthrough video for this one. Uh, it's a nice little cute game, very nice art, uh, easy to play. It's a little bit tricky to figure out some of the details of card play, but once you figure those things out, there's a lot of uh, pattern recognition and um, building up the reef. It's, it's a nice little game. So this is number 10 of my 2020 games. Number nine is another small game, the Love Letter Infinity Gauntlet with the Marvel characters. It's different than Love Letter in the fact that it's a one versus many. One plays Thanos and the others play the Marvel heroes trying to bring him down. Really easy to learn and a lot of fun to play. This is my number nine game for 2020. Number eight is kind of a spin-off game, Mysterium Park. So I was a little bit hesitant to put it on the list, but and I've never played Mysterium, so I don't know exactly how similar they are. We've really enjoyed Mysterium Park. It's quick and it's easy to learn. I've heard that it's significantly simpler than the regular Mysterium game. We've had a lot of fun taking turns playing the ghost and trying to recognize the patterns uh, from the vision cards to identify the people and the locations where the crime was committed in Mysterium Park. So number eight from 2020. Number seven is a game from Funko Games and Prospero Hall, Pan Am. And this is a nice little, fairly lightweight Euro style game where you are playing a small airline trying to uh, compete in some ways with Pan Am, but also invest in Pan Am and buy stocks. So really nice little game. This is number seven for 2020, Pan Am. Number six from 2020, Sherlock Holmes, the consulting detective, Baker Street Irregulars. Uh, I hadn't played any of the Sherlock Holmes games, but we, like I said, have really enjoyed escape room games and mystery games with Mysterium Park. And so this is one that we've just tried recently. It was fun to just sit around by the fire and read through the newspaper and read through the interviews of the different people that we would come across as we we're trying to solve the crimes. Uh, it was really a lot of fun. And this is number six in 2020. Now we break into the top five games, in my opinion, from 2020. And number five is the Princess Bride Adventure Book Game. We had a blast with this game. It's so much fun to sort of relive the movie with all the different quotes. It feels like you're playing the movie as you go through the different scenes that really do mirror the progression of the movie uh, type of the movie storyline. So we had a lot of fun with the Princess Bride Adventure Book Game by Ravensburger. Number five of 2020. Number four is Trekking the World by Underdog Games. We loved trekking the national parks and we're excited to pick this one up. And actually, I think I like this one a little bit better than trek trekking the national parks. There's just a few little twists to it and the requirement to move before you take any of your other actions made you really think about your steps, not only for the current turn, but for future turns a lot more. Really liked Trekking the World um, by Underdog Games. And this is my number four for 2020. My number three game of 2020 is Chronicles of Crime 1400, part of the Millennium series. And this is also a spinoff of another game, Chronicles of Crime, and there were lots of different expansions and different crime packs for that game. I had actually never played any of the Chronicles of Crime original games, and so this is our first experience with it. Uh, this game by Lucky Duck Games, though, was a lot of fun for us. We really enjoyed using the QR codes to lead us to new locations and new interviews with different people we hadn't met. We loved using Percival the dog to sniff different things and then lead us off to a, another area to investigate. So this game was a lot of fun and number three for us in 2020, Chronicles of Crime 1400. For me, number two in 2020 was Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. I've only played it solo, but I really have enjoyed learning about Gloomhaven. Never have played the big box Gloomhaven before, but when I heard that this was sort of an introduction that would teach you the mechanisms and the story of Gloomhaven, I decided to give it a shot. And boy, have I really enjoyed it. 
I've mainly played with two characters in solo mode and have just enjoyed experimenting with the different characters. I haven't really fully do dove into the campaigns yet because I'm wanting to experiment with the different characters first and kind of get comfortable with all of them on some of those earlier scenarios. And then I'm hoping to then choose the two that I really want to invest in and go for it from there and just go through all of the scenarios in this box. But Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is my number two for 2020. And my number one game for 2020, Forgotten Waters by Plaid Hat Games. Uh, we got this one actually fairly early in 2020, and we had a blast with this game. Uh, first, just my wife and I played two-player and managed all the different characters ourselves, and we've also played four-player. We've gone through a number of the different scenarios and adventures, and this is just a lot of fun. We laugh, we love the integration of the app and the storytelling of the different characters, uh, sort of the live-action voiceovers that come through that app. Uh, we would just laugh and have a great time. It's also a reasonably challenging game. We did lose a couple rounds as we were going through, so uh, we enjoyed that. Some people would say maybe it's more of an experience than a game, but we found that there is a game here, at least for us, and this is our number one game of 2020. So what were your top games in 2020? These are the ones that we got to the table that we had a chance to play and really enjoy. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and hopefully it inspires you to maybe try some of these games if you haven't had a chance to yet. If you did enjoy the, the video, please click on the like button down below and it would be great if you'd subscribe to the channel. If you want to get notifications of future videos, click on that bell icon and do leave some comments below. What were your top games of the year? What did you love about some of the games that we really enjoyed? As always, thanks for watching. This is Billy Indiana signing off. Oh.